see it's usually somebody is going through the same thing I'm going through. Right. And my husband is no help. Because all he says is, it's all right. It's all in God's hands. God's got it all under control. And that's not what you really want to hear, although you know it. But you know that. You just want somebody to say, it's okay, baby. But that isn't it. So anyway, I was praying last night. I was up to 12 o'clock reading my Bible. And this verse came to me. So it must be for somebody out there, maybe on Facebook or here. I don't know. But anyway, it's Isaiah 41 and 10. And it says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Yes. Be Amen. not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Yes. And I said, well, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's for me, but it's got to be for somebody else. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, guys. Let's pray. Thank you for not forgetting me, Lord. Thank you for holding me up.
You can get a two-year-old or a three-year-old trying to tell you something, and you just ignore that that child because you think, oh, well, she's never, she don't know what she's talking about. But it kind of taught me, because Bishop called me yesterday, and he said, I would like for you to speak today. And I, I, I told Bishop something else, but what I really wanted to tell him is, Bishop, it take me a long time. You got to call me two weeks in advance. <laughs> but I didn't do that. I said, okay, Bishop, I, I, I'll take care of it. So I'm writing, you know, trying to get the, you know, my message together. And my granddaughter said, Grandpa, what are you doing? I said, I'm writing my message because I have to preach tomorrow. And she said, well, Grandpa, how do you know what to tell the people when you preach? And I said, God, God tells me. And you know what she said to me? <laughs> she said, well, if God is telling you what to say, why are you erasing and scratching out so <laughs> A grown person would tell me that, you know, but that's what she said, you know, so she said, so you don't have anything to say, Grandpa? I said, no, baby, because you're right. So maybe God wasn't telling me, so hopefully this is what the Lord is telling me to preach about today. <laughs> All right? Uh, <laughs> uh, stand so we can uh, pray and go into the Word. The scripture that we're going to be, I'm going to be working with today will be Hebrews 12 and 11. Intended that he intended me to be. 
that this way through through this painful but pass through this painful but profitable experience. I learned that when God disciplines us, our greatness, our our greatness gain, our greatness gain isn't what we get, but what we become. He disciplines, he corrects, and he trains us often through difficult situations. Growth and change, one, growth and change are often unsettling. But the gain was worth the pain. Right. God upsets. God uses setbacks to move us forward. All right. Ooh, I might have to borrow some of these glasses down here pretty soon. But I, 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 I brought that because for my message today, it's called God's Training Camp. And when we go back to the message from Hebrews, this passage is pointing out that experiencing something unpleasant does not mean we are being punished by God or have been abandoned by Him. There are times where God uses struggles and hardships to correct us away from sin. And the reason I did that was because it literally brought me back to the day I went to jail. Some of you might know it, some of you might not. But I'm not gonna get into the whole details, but if you look at the sports on television, the football players, the baseball players, they all have to go to training before they go out there and play. Sometimes, whatever job you give up, you have to have that training. My training wasn't a football field. My training wasn't a baseball field. My training was a jail cell. Uh -oh. That's where God had the time to train me because he knew what he had involved for me to get done. So before I could do it, because normally before when God sent you out of a job, you have you know you have to be trained. He gives you the, the, the tools and everything you need to work with before he sent you out there. Amen. So in spite of what I did, he did not abandon me. But he put me somewhere where he could get to me. All right. And when I was in there, believe it or not, he was in there with me. Every single step of the day, he was in there with me. And there are times when we simply being given an opportunity for growth being trained into a deeper faith. So what that is telling me is that in there, he was training me to do what I do now. Whether it's in the community, whether it's in church, whether it's at home, wherever it's at, he was training me to spread his word. He was training me to understand that things are going to happen every single day. Things are going to happen. So instead of stressing and, 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 and bringing everybody else down, then this is how he trains my mind to understand. I know how to talk to somebody. You know, because sometimes you can get people that 
They just let it. Mm -hmm. You might go to them and you know try to talk to them about something and they just let it. See, these are the things that he trained. And guess what? He trained me in jail with the people that's many different don't care. So if I could pass that training, I can pass any training there is out there in this community because he knows that I'm a community man. He knows that out in the community you're going to find gangsters, you're going to find robbers, you're going to find pedophiles, you're going to find every single thing that you might not see at home in your at, at, at your house, or maybe say you won't see it in the community. Train you how to to deal with people that need. Deal with people that don't understand who the Lord is. Mm -hmm. See, these are the things I was saying, and, and there was no way I could tell him, no, not today, God, because I'm going out here to the racetrack, or I think I'm going out here to the club. You know what? Because I sure did not have a key to get out of jail. <laughs> So I just had to stay there and deal with what he was teaching me. See, my game, you know, was worth the pain because there was some pain in there. I'm not going to go through it with you, but there was some pain in there for that three months. There was a lot of pain. There was a lot of things I seen. There was a lot of things that I was involved in, but because he was in there with me, he took care of me. There was days I went up late at night to go in to use the restroom. And the other side, because there were different names, different gangs, and different stuff inside there. There's no way you can run. The guard goes around an hour each time just to check to make sure, but and that, that don't help that much, but you know. Uh, and, and, and where I went in to use the restroom, and about three or four of them came in because of what they wanted to do to me. But guess what? By the time they came in, I said to myself, I'm gonna get up against the wall because they can't come behind me. So whoever the first one is, is the one that I'm gonna grab. So whatever happened to me gonna happen to him. <laughs> After that, I said, Lord, you, have to do something about this. And the Lord told me, he says, raise your head and look at the entrance of the bathroom. And when I did, there was four other guys standing there telling them, whatever you have on your mind and you think you're going to do, you're going to be in trouble. That's, it stops right there. Stop right there. There's plenty more, but I'm not going to go through that. But I'm just letting you know, each day that I was there, he took me. There was days that I got on the telephone, and I couldn't reach nobody. And I said, Lord, I just need to talk to somebody. And there was nobody around. Everybody's at work. Everybody doing what they're doing. But guess what? I picked up that telephone, and who answered my call? My mother-in-law. She said, hey, son, that just made my day. And I asked her, I said, they look at me here as a pastor. They called me pastor in here. I was teaching Sunday school. I was doing things I didn't even know before I went in there. I did. I did those things I couldn't do. There was scriptures I didn't know. But it sure was coming out. It sure was working. And I know it wasn't me. So who else was it? That'd be the Lord. It had to be the Lord. Every single day, he was there. There was a riot. There was a big riot. And the SRT members came in with the big shotgun. And they had the biggest, with the sergeant, he was so huge. And he could have took on about 50 of us by himself. But he had a big old shotgun, and then he had his other people with him. 
So when they came in, they said, everybody get down. And all these guys was just like trying to ignore it. So I got up on the table and I said, everybody get down. And they got down. And one of the officers came to me and he said, I need for you to get in this room and you stay in this room and don't get out. Now, that was kind of odd to me. But once he took me in the room, he said, there's a young man that works with us. Anthony told us that his father in the gospel is in here. And he's a good man, he's never worried about it. And he took care of me. They didn't separate me. Whatever they had everybody do, they had me do the same thing. But it was just the point, you know, like when I had my food, and they wanted to take everybody's food and they said, no, you hold on to yours because we know you are not in So you need your food. They took care of me. But it's not like it was favoritism or anything. That's not what it was. It was just that what I've learned since joining New Vision Christian Fellowship and what I applied while I was in there, they looked up to me. They called me OG, you know, whatever. Whatever you call me, just call me anyway. But this is what I'm talking about, God's training camp, because all these different things, it's not just a story. He was training me mm -hmm. to all these things. He wasn't, wasn't like for me to feel like I'm, you know, got a big, I couldn't have a big head because my head was so small when I came in. I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything. I was lost while I was in there. And I mean, the Lord set up everything for me. The minute that it took about two weeks before we could even get into the room. But once we got into the room where we were supposed to be, they told me, this is your room. When I turned around, there was a cross on the outside of the room. There was no other cross anywhere. It was a black cross. Whether somebody drew it or what was on the room that I was in. Now, some people say that that's coincidence. Somebody left. I don't care if it's coincidence or who left it there. The Lord could have put anybody else in there but he chose me. So he's letting me understand that he got me. He's taking care of me. So I never questioned it. I never asked any kind of question about anything. They jumped in. The gentleman came and he said, "Can I just 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 give me your 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 leggings? I'm gonna do your bed for you." I said, "No, it's okay. I'll do my own bed." I don't know what he was thinking or where he was coming from, but I'm gonna do my own bed. Like, no favors, no. Mm -hmm. I said, that's okay. And he said, so you just gonna be like that? I said, well, no, I can do my own thing. Once I got in there and I came out, I did my bed and everything and I sat down and I wasn't scared anymore. I was at ease because I felt I felt the presence of the Lord with me every step that I took. When I was, before we got into the thing, the, the, the lady, the, off the, the, the jail guards, they said, I told him I wasn't feeling good because they wasn't doing anything. They didn't, they didn't send me to get my shots, and, you know, for my diabetes. I wasn't eating right and stuff, you know, and, I had to go see the doctor for, for what, whatever they do. And when I 
went in, she said, what's the matter? I said, I don't feel that I'm She said, you can. She said, I didn't know they didn't. They, and Black Mountain, nice, nice lady. And you know what she said to me? She said, I'll give you two days that you can sit in this jail in here in the infirmary with me. And she brought fruits and she brought peanut butter sandwiches and stuff that I could get my strength back up before she could take care of me. Now, is that a coincidence? Not after I see that cross. There's no coincidence in none of this. That's the Lord taking Amen. care of me. He's training me. That's, that was my training camp. So it's just, it's, just a, it's just a lot of things that, you know, when, when football players go out and they train, they train because that gives them strength. That gives them the way to understand how to make their play. You know, it's just it's just different things. You know, God trains us in, in every and all ways because that's the best way of us to do what we need to do. And last but not least on, on, on why I said I'll talk about myself is because I've never talked about this before. Very few people in here that know where I was and why I was there. And even though there was pain, I, I was so, when, when, when I got out, before I got out, and like I said, there's, there's a whole lot. Before I got out, it was, it was very hard. Because when we got to the holding cell, when we were getting ready to get out, and the lady said, you're not going anywhere. I said, I'm not going anywhere. She said, yes, you're not going anywhere. She said, you're getting in the bus because we are taking you down to the federal. I said, I said, I said, I don't know what it is you're talking about, ma'am. She said, well, you're not an American citizen. I said, ma'am, you, I, I don't know. She said, I don't want to hear anything. She refused to talk to me. And she's getting ready to chain me up with the rest of the people that take me on out to put me on another bus to a federal prison. Mm -hmm. And this gentleman that I've never seen before or never heard, he had a uniform on and he told the sergeant, he, he, the sergeant told the lady, she was a, a, a female guard, he said, unhook me. And he said, come over here. And I spoke with that gentleman, and I told him exactly what they said. They have a car that they were military, I have a driver that had everything. I said, they have everything. He says, go in there and just wait for me. He says, well, you take everybody else. Now, was that coincidence? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not at all. And just before, he said to me, she said, give him his clothes, and I got dressed, and he said, come and go with me. And he took me around to the park before you go out the doors. And he said, you stand right here. He said, somebody's gonna come and talk to you. And I said, right here, I, I turned away. I turned away because I wanted to, to see what's around and see what's going on. And I turned back around, that man was gone. He was gone. And I, they never talk about this stuff because people that don't understand, they won't believe or, or even imagine what I'm saying. Because I didn't believe it myself to when I spoke to my bishop and he explained to me about guardian angels mm -hmm. and what they do. And I didn't ever saw that when the guy came up, he said, what are you doing here? I said, the gentleman told me to wait right here. Somebody's coming. He said, I don't know anything about that. He said, well, who is the gentleman? I said, you know, I, I was a short gentleman. I had a uniform on, sergeant. 
had everything. He brought me up here, took me away. He said, did you get a name? I said, no, I didn't like, look at his name or anything, but he got information and everything from me. And he said, there's nobody of what you're talking about, said, because I'm the only sergeant on call. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, I'm the only sergeant, the only man, I'm the only person that could have brought me up here. I said, well, it wasn't you, but somebody brought me up here. And I'm not thinking about no angels, or I'm thinking, I know y'all ain't gonna stop this bus and, and, and put me back on this bus. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm scared, and, and, and he said, when you get in there and you wait. So I went in there and sat down and wait. So I picked up the phone to call my wife, and the phone did not work. Hmm. So okay, I guess I'll wait. And then usually they let you out at 2 o'clock in the morning. Here it is, the gentleman, this was probably about 9 or 10 o'clock at night, he told me, he says, come here. He says, here's your stuff. Here's your ID and, you know, here's everything. You know, you're getting ready to go home. Wow. Okay, and I said, is there a telephone or anything that I can call to see what's going on? He says, no. He says, I need you ready. He said, just wait. Now, all the other guys in the jail, in the, in the same room that's going home, they mad because they have been longer than me, and I just came and going right home. So you should hear all the words and everything that was coming out. And as soon as I got everything, and I went in, didn't even get a chance to call my wife. I just get up and stepped outside, stepped out. But they have an elevator thing that you go in, it closes, and then you turn, and when it opens, they outside. So once I went in to that elevator right there in the, in the thing, that man was in there, the, that angel was in the elevator again. That same man. And I asked him, I said, what is your name? That's why I've never talked about this, because I'm telling you, I asked him what was his name. He said, don't worry about what my name is. He said, but I'm going to tell you something. He said, as long as you're walking on this face of the earth, he said, don't you ever come back here again. And the door opened, and I walked out. And when I walked out, I turned around and said, thank you. God bless. And there was nobody there for me to say anything. And when I stepped out, my wife was outside waiting for me. Is that a coincidence? Oh, no. Mm -mm. That's not a coincidence at all. So all that training that the Lord put me through, he was there with me all the way through. Thank you, Jesus. All the way through. So if you think that there's no guardian angel, if you don't think you have a guardian angel, you better think again. Because maybe one day, or maybe you have, and you can't tell anybody about it, but don't be afraid to tell anybody about it. Because I was. I was. I was so afraid to talk about it that it had me believe that that ain't true. Now you've seen things. But please understand. God has his training camp. Now when it's time for you, you will be in that training camp. If there's something that you have that he needs for you to get done, you will have to be in that training camp. So just remember this, God does not abandon us when we suffer. Thank you, Jesus. In many cases, he uses those experiences to train us. As we go through our suffering to make us as we go through our suffering is to make us stronger. It is clear that suffering is often God's way of building us up and training us. Christians who respond to trials by seeking God in faith can avoid the fate 
of less of less faith of less faithful men. Look at these say it again. Christians who respond to trials by seeking God in faith can avoid the fate of less faithful men. It's a bloody more to this story, but I'll tell you one thing. I'm glad that I went through it. Amen.
And when they were having communion, when they were coming together, has anybody been served? When they were supposed to be coming together for communion, some of the folks were getting drunk. Some of the folks were thought it was a golden corral. <laughs> they were doing things that were not in line with the purpose in which they were coming. So Apostle Paul writes to them and he shares, reminding them of the reason why we come together. Also, Paul then says this, For I have received the Lord that which also was delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is why we do it. That it will be in our minds. That sometimes things are happening so much in our lives that maybe we forget why we are coming together. When we come together on Sundays, it's it's not just amen to hear the. the praise team or to to hear the pastor or whoever is speaking. We are coming together because we are the body of Jesus Christ. And he wants us to love one another. So often what happens in our lives is that we have been going through so much throughout the week that we fail to enter into the reason for which we come together. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We are doing this because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. That his blood was shed for you and for me. And the power that was in the blood that was shed over 2,000 years ago still reaches to the highest mountain, still flows to the lowest valley, and that blood still has strength. And is as powerful as it was the day that it was shared. And it has that same intensity of power. What sickness can stand in our way? What problem can stand in our way? The deliverance is in the blood. Drink you all day.
songs. We say these words. But I want you to get fixed in your mind one thing. Whether it's a sickness, whether it's a disease, whether it's an addiction, whether it's a struggle in your flesh, get one thing in your mind right now. Now I want you to thank God for the blood.
us today. We want to uh, do our announcements, but before we do our announcements, we'd like to give out the ministerial cards. Elder Mary Welsh. Elder Michelle Starks. Amen. 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 Um, 
They are the other ones that have to deal with everything that's going on with their, their loved one. So let, let's keep them in our prayers as well. Amen. Every Wednesday is a day of fasting for our assembly. I'm mixing these things up here. Amen. But that's that's how I do it. Mix them up. Got to be yourself. All right. <laughs> At this time, we're going to stand and be dismissed. Amen. this day, for this is the day that you have made, and we've made the choice to rejoice in your family. Father, I thank you as those here for one more day walking on the top so Thank you for life, health, and a reasonable portion of strength. Father, we ask the Lord Jesus that you would be with us as we leave this assembly and those who are watching us, Lord Jesus, as they travel throughout this week. Keep your angels of protection round about us. Keep us from hurt, harm, and danger. Guard our lives, Lord, from the, what the enemy's desires are. Keep us, Lord Jesus, and we will be kept. Now, Father, we pray for those that are sick and afflicted. We pray for those that are challenged, Lord Jesus, in the hearts, in the hearts and minds, in their emotions, Lord Jesus, for those that are struggling in their spirits. Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you will be, Lord Jesus, that bomb in Gilead. Father, that you will be that instrument, Lord Jesus, of victory, Lord. God, help us to go into the covenant. Those who have been challenged, Lord. Give us total recovery, Lord. Oh, Father, we praise you for it. And all the Lord of the children of yours. Now dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Bring us back at the appointed time. This we pray in Jesus' name. And everyone say amen.